here. Okay, here we go. I think I'm a minute early, but that's okay. Talk about obstacles where the adversary gets involved before you are about to share the gospel or do something worth something. We have a bunch of little kids playing outside my window, and they never play by my window, but they decided to do it now. Anyway, my name is Troy Abels. I am so thankful for the opportunity I have, sacrament language, uh, to give this presentation talk. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel. Uh, I do a podcast called The Last Dispensation, and you can catch that on YouTube. We talk about really awesome things related to the gospel, fringy stuff sometimes, and the basic principles and ordinances, faith, repentance, baptism, and all that good stuff. Filling the Spirit, that's what's important. So the title of my presentation is, and sorry about seeing the corner of the room, I have to make some adjustments uh, accordingly. Written on the tablets of our hearts. This could also be titled, Bring All Things to Your Remembrance, Whatsoever I Have Said Unto You. I thought about it for a while, and I thought maybe that was also fitting. Why is it important to read the scriptures associated with the lesson, and not just go directly to the lesson? Pardon me. Because as we read scripture prayerfully, whether we completely understand it or not, we are spiritually nourished. And isn't that our main objective anyway? From here we go to an apostle quote. Bruce R. McConkie, he is my one of my favorite apostles. The answers to nearly all important doctrinal questions, and this is a quote, are found in the standard works or in the sermons and writings of the prophet Joseph Smith. Close quote. Paul says that the scriptures are able to make us wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. That's in 2 Timothy 3.15. So the standard works are authoritative. <clears throat> they are our main source of gleaning spiritual knowledge and doctrine, and also the leaders of the church, because they we tend to forget they write the scriptures. So, when we do not understand Paul, what then? We read all the chapters related to the lesson before we read the lesson. Why not just the referenced scriptures? Let's briefly examine Paul's writing styles. Have you noticed there are passages that you can only understand slightly? And then some you can completely understand by Paul. Some that go over your head and some that don't. The Corinthians were saints that Paul was very familiar with. And he loved them very much. And they loved him. They were not just members of the church. They were close friends. They were deep there were deep love letters, so to speak, encouraging them like you would send letters to full-time missionaries that are on their mission. This was kind of like the general conference issue of the Ensign. You can read Second Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. We see the Corinthians loved Paul very much, kind of like we love President Nelson. He also remembers how he interacted with them when he was there with them. Read 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7. And then later, this is where I this is the meat of kind of what I what I'm getting at. Maybe some of the reasons why we don't completely understand Paul. Remember that P Peter warns the saints. You can read 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning at, at verse 3, Peter lets the saints know that there is an agenda to destroy the church and that there are antichrists and false prophets. So Paul is deliberately writing at times in a style of his own to confuse anyone who does not have the gift of the Holy Ghost or is not truly humble 
and trying to feel his message. Peter is also saying that there would be conspiracies, <clears throat> excuse me, that there would be conspiracies to morph and distort the scriptures so that someday maybe there might be false mystical gospels that appear on the horizon. There would be a way to for them to conform them to these new pagan-like teachings. Peter, while admitting that some of Paul's epistles were hard to follow at times, he's not saying that everyone perverted Paul's epistles, though. Only as only also that those who are untaught and unstable and had no righteous desire to find the truth would not comprehend them. In other words, <clears throat> those who allowed themselves to be blinded by the craftiness of men and the adversary would have a problem. Peter then contrasts those people with the true Christians in the churches in Asia where he was writing this warning to. The words of eternal life, could we say, confound the wise and the haughty. The false prophets and distorters of verse did not have the Holy Ghost. Peter and Paul knew this. You can read this in Romans chapter 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and read Jude 1 verse 19. Some of Paul's epistles are deep and difficult to understand, but only part of them. The Corinthians knew Paul, like I said before, well, and had the spirit strong enough to discern Paul's words. And I think that's pretty neat how they, he had a relationship with them like that. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15 says that to study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So this isn't because Paul lived a long time ago and maybe that he used gospel-related terminology foreign to us today. It was a puzzle for the wicked and gibberish because they had not the Spirit, which required the Spirit. Without the Holy Ghost, you cannot discern the Scriptures. People will either fail to understand them or create philosophies and mingle them with Scripture. Paul and Peter are both exhorting their various stakes of Zion, or branches, or whatever you call them, to continue to endure to the end, keep the spirit that they received at baptism, to guard against false prophets and antichrists, or those who would corrupt the gospel of Jesus Christ. So if Paul frustrates you, his words still give you power and later can be opened up, like I said before, uh, in the one minute teaser, kind of like a uh, an app, how we download an app to our phone and then you have the option of when you want to open it up. Well, the Holy Ghost knows that information is there. Uh, well, let's take President Benson, for example, where he said, there is a power in the Book of Mormon which will begin to flow into our lives the moment you begin a serious study of the book. Well, Isaiah is part of the Book of Mormon. Isaiah also is in the Bible. <clears throat> and so are the words of Paul or any other scripture we might have a hard time figuring out. And sometimes scripture is written to be discerned primarily by a strong discernment of the Holy Ghost. So, once again, if you don't understand Paul very well, you will actually receive a power by reading Paul, whether you understand him or not. You will have these things engraven in your spirit, written on your very heart walls. Think of it like you are Well, reading Isaiah, a lot of people have a hard time understanding Isaiah, but the more that you read it, and the more you read it 
and practice reading it by the Holy Ghost and and having a prayerful heart and having the Spirit, you tend to understand it more and more by the Spirit. So the Spirit is able to open those spiritual apps later and help you recall them when you are studying the material or teaching it. But he can't pull up anything unless you have studied it. Remember John 14, 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Bring all things to your remembrance, whether that is understanding we are divine sons and daughters of God, or helping us remember things we have learned to teach a principle. Not only that, but there is also a power that comes just from reading the scriptures, and they prepare us spiritually before we study and teach, and the words are eternal life. As I thought about 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3, written on the tablets of our hearts, even though that is a true statement and scripture, I found it more fitting to reach this conclusion and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever whatsoever I have said unto you. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tablets of stone, but in fleshy tablets of the heart. I am so thankful for this opportunity. By the way, I have a YouTube channel, but I was nervous as heck because this is the first time I've ever done it live. Thank you so much. And it's over. And that's it. Bye. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.